Hi, I'm Dr. Charlene Walters, author, business and branding mentor, trainer, as well as your host for Launch, a business talk show for anyone who wants to launch their business, their career, or their life. Hey everyone, welcome to Launch. It's Charlene Walters, your host, and today we have a wonderful guest, Steve Strauss. He is a small business expert, a USA Today columnist, and an author. Welcome to the show, Steve. Charlene, great to be here. Hey, everybody, and thanks for having me. I'm so glad you could join us. Can you tell us a bit about your background? You have so much experience, and yeah. I know the audience would love to hear about it. Oh, sure. So I've been the USA Today small business columnist for quite a while, 20 years or so. <laughs> Um, but prior to that, I was an attorney, um, and I still am an attorney, although I came to my senses. I don't practice anymore. Uh, it turns out I'm a far better writer than I ever was. It happens, writer, so. right? Right, yeah. So, but my first couple of books were legal books, legal books for the layman, and then um, USA Today was looking for a lawyer who could write about small business and had published, and someone said, oh, that sounds like my friend Steve. So once I you know, started writing with USA Today. That was my, you know, I grew up in a small business family, like so many people in small business do. So it's always been a passion of mine. And you know, what I love is just helping people start, run, grow and succeed in their small business. And I do that with my column, with my books. I do a lot of speaking, you know, webinars, events, uh, you know, things like that. Anything to help my small business brothers and sisters. It definitely seems to be in your blood for sure. And you're continuing to pass it along, which is wonderful. Take this, Charlene. So I'll just say, you know, my dad owned one carpet store in Southern California, and he turned it into the biggest chain in, in California at that time. And, you know, it was in the late 60s, 70s, and I was asked to write a story about what my dad did for a living. And I couldn't wrap my little brain around, you know, retail carpet store owner. It wasn't like lawyer or doctor. So I said, well, dad, what do you what do? you do? What do I say? And he said, well, Stevie, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. Yes. <laughs> Entre what? You know, and it was especially a time when the word wasn't as used as it is today. And he said, well, yes. an entrepreneur, that's a person who takes a risk with money to make money. I thought, oh, that sounds kind of cool. Risk. Apparently, I really thought it was cool because I'm still doing it myself. So <laughs> I, I love entrepreneurs. I, I'm trying to help people like you, help, help people you know, think like an entrepreneur. Absolutely. It is a great space and it's so much opportunity for people. And you know, times are changing as we were talking about a little bit earlier. What can businesses today do to really maintain that personal connection with their customers? So that's, that's a great question. So, so much of the world today, of course, especially since COVID is online, but even before it was, it was online. Uh, the challenge for that is it, it is hard to create rapport online uh, as opposed to offline. You know, offline in your store, in your shop, in your office, you can crack a joke. Yeah. You can shake a hand. You can look somebody in the eye and smile and you know, create that personal connection. Now, how do you do that online? Not as easy. So, and you only have a couple <laughs> seconds yeah. to do it, right? Someone comes to your website, they come to your social pages, they want to know, are you legit? Are you not legit? So the first thing you got to do is make sure, you, you know, everything looks fantastic and that's a given, but you got to give people some clues that you're legitimate. So whether it's co-branding with big brands that you work with, that's one way to let people know, you know, instantly that, okay, this guy or this woman, whoever it is, you know, is someone I can listen to, you know, and, and be confident that it's worth my, worth my time. Uh, but then you might want to have uh, testimonials on your site. Video is incredible. You know, the stats show and in, in my new book coming out this year, Your Small Business Boom, you know, I talk about video a lot because video is really a great way in this online world to make that kind of connection. You can look in the camera and do the things I was talking about. You can introduce your staff or show your shop or whatever it is. It's so it's figuring out how to use the digital tools available to still create that personal experience to the extent you can. Yes, absolutely. Video is so useful and such a great tool for everyone, even though some people are still shy to use video, which is hard to believe now with Zoom and everything. Well, my wife is one of those people, right? She, you know, she gets on a Zoom and she kind of freezes up and doesn't really like it. But, you know, we are in the YouTube era. Like nobody expects a video 
to look fantastic. It's good if it looks fantastic, but it can look a little less fantastic and still be okay. And in fact, there's some authenticity that comes along with it not being perfect, don't you think? I absolutely think. I love to see those bloopers. I love to pe see people <laughs> living real life, having kids running, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Right, exactly. It really helps us, you know, endear ourselves to our customers, lets them know that we're a real person and we're not this marketing machine, you know, coming at them for sure. Right. What are some other marketing tips you have for small business owners? Because I think that's something, you know, a lot of new entrepreneurs kind of struggle with. They're trying to do everything. What are some general tips, would you say? So, you know, marketing is, is near and dear to my heart. And my book almost is about marketing, but not necessarily. It's, you know, how do you take what's happened in this past year and take it to the next level? Whether you're a one-person business or you have 20 people in your business, the, the, the goal for most small businesses is, is to grow. Well, how do you grow? Well, you grow by letting new people know about your business. I always say, you know, owning a small business is kind of like being in a room with the light off. You know, <laughs> you're in this dark room, you know, you're there, but yeah. no one else knows you are there. So you have to turn the light on. And the only way you can turn the light on is with marketing. You have to get your name, your business, your brand, your message, your products in front of new people, whether it's listening or reading or watching or all of those, preferably, you have to find different tools that engage your audience in different ways so that you can reach new people because the, the reading people may not be the visual people. So if you hit them both, then you're going to get more people. And that's what we want. Yeah, we want to spread around the love, as I like to say. That, that's right. <laughs> do, do you have some marketing things that, that you like in particular that you have used or that have been successful in, in your business? Yeah, definitely. I, I'm like you. I sort of dabble in a little bit of everything. You know, I do a lot of writing. I love that. I like to do videos, too. I like to do events. I like to connect a lot on social media. I like to network. So I'm sort of all over the place. Some people, I think, tend to lean one way or the other and i think it just kind of grows over time and what i like about it too is that it tends to snowball you know you keep moving right. keep shifting that's and, for sure and now during the pandemic obviously as business owners we've all had this big enormous pivot and shift as everyone loves to say pivot 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 but as we emerge from the pandemic and those customer needs are shifting again how can our small business owners really stay on top of those changing needs? So it, it is going to be a, a different world and a, and a hybrid world that we've entered into and that we are entering into. Yes. And so the tricks, for lack of a better word, that we used before may not be as successful. Right. And, you know, some of, the, some of the people who did these pivots, I just did a series of um, videos and interviews with PayPal. And I talked to different PayPal merchants who had successfully taken their physical business and turned it into a digital business. And that was, you know, that's a pretty nifty trick for some of these people. One of them is it was a, a company in New York called Higher Dose. And they had these spas of infrared light. So, you know, if you're gonna do anything in New York, you have to be different and unique and, yeah. and better, right? To stand out. Yeah. So, and she, they had figured it out. They had spas where infrared light, you go in the spa room and you get this light and you just, You'd sweat and schwitz and cleanse. Well, almost overnight, she had to close eight, her eight locations. Well, what do you do when you have a physical business like that? And you have, and well, she figured out a way to, to take, to buy, to turn her infrared light into blankets. So she, they manufactured these infrared blankets oh. and they started selling them online. And now she's making more money online with her infrared blankets than she did with all of her stores because the overhead, as we all know, in a physical store, with a real store, is quite high compared to a digital store. So all of a sudden she now has two different profit centers. And I think that is the key. You know, I, I'm a big believer in what we call the, the multiple profit center model, right? So originally higher dose had one profit center. Maybe they had two, maybe they did a little, then they did a little dabbling in online, but they had these physical stores. Now they have two big, profit centers because they're, they're reopening now. But what if you have three profit centers or four? Any great business figures out more than one way to make a buck because business goes up and business goes down. There is a business 
cycle. Definitely, you know, and I think that was a big silver lining of the pandemic is this additional revenue that everyone's created and now they can continue on. I know for my gym, when I was going to the gym every day, I had to stop, but then they started adding the virtual sessions. Now they can keep those, have yes. those people that are traveling at work, whatever it is, they can keep doing that too. And they're also really great about, you know, connecting on social media as many businesses, but it can be overwhelming at first, I think, for new entrepreneurs. What are some of your tips related to social media, would you say? So um, I'm a little different because I think you need to concentrate on one or two social media sites. A lot of people like to really diversify, to use that word again, and be on a lot of platforms. And that works for some people, but it does take a lot of time takes a lot of effort it takes and different platforms do different things and so unless social is your really main way of connecting you know you don't want to be on the social channel that you like the best you want to be on the social channel that your customers like the best and different different clientels tend to go to different platforms I mean, i'm a big believer in you know organic social growth is great but it really is slow yes. and you know <laughs> isn't it Yes. So you buy, buy, you can buy traffic. Yeah. Kind of, right? Put your ad, put your product, put your business in front of people who are your lookalike audience, spend some money. They're going to be likely to like you and they're going to like you then. And then organically, you're going to have this bigger list. And we can talk about a list, but I think a list is one of the best things anyone can do to grow their business right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and sometimes I think you don't have to have it all figured out right away. Sometimes one of your platforms will just start growing at a faster rate than other and you realize that's where your customer is and that's where your audience is. So sometimes you just concentrate. And I tell everyone, you know, when you're first starting out, just start small, start two or three platforms or one or two, like yeah. you're saying, and then you can kind of move on from there and reuse content and make it simpler and, you know, do all those things you can to grow your business. But social is just wonderful and obviously so critical for us small business owners out there. I like what you said about starting small and, and just jumping in. I just saw a quote from, it might have been Mark Cuban, but I forget exactly. It's some great entrepreneur. And they said, if, you're, if the first iteration of your product or your business isn't kind of ugly, you waited way too long, right? <laughs> At some point, you just got to jump in and do it. And I do think... Uh, that's really important. I talked to a guy in my book, his name is Joel Calm. And Joel has written some best-selling books about Twitter and social media. And now he's into cryptocurrency as he's a very popular podcast. And he's, you know, I'm like, well, how do you create a tribe? Wherever you go, Joel, you create an amazing tribe of people who listen to you or watch what you do or buy your book. And he said, well, you know, you've got to just, at some point you just jump in and do it. You're not going to have it down. It's not going to be perfect but at least you're getting started and then you figure it out on the way. And that's exactly what you just said, Charlene. Yes. Just jump in and do it. And I'm talking to myself too. Like, you know, sometimes like analysis paralysis, you think about it too much and okay, just go do it already. I know it's funny because we're experts and a lot of times we don't take our own advice either. So yeah, we have to well, remind exactly. ourselves and give ourselves the nudge to take that advice. Yeah. Something else that's really cool that you do is you give your top business trends for the year. What are some top trends we can expect this year? Yeah, this is something I've done at USA Today every year. And it's, you know, the top trends in small business for that year. Uh, <laughs> this year, it's altogether different because it's hard to say what the, you know, how it's going to be. So I've mentioned this book and it's coming out next year. Uh, it's coming out in the fall, but I wrote it eight months ago. And the world I was writing about eight months ago is very different than the world as it's gonna to look today and in six months from now when the book comes out because everything is moving so fast. So it's a little hard to say what the trends are. This digital trend that we've all seen in the online shopping, that's an easy one, right? That low hanging fruit for me to say, hey, digital is the thing, yeah, yay, thanks to you. You know, great, great tip there. But I do think more importantly, this hybrid work world that we're living in is gonna be a, a lasting thing for sure. People. A lot of people don't want to go back to the office and a lot of people are going to have to go back to the office. I just saw that McKinsey put out a report and they said going forward, their, their estimation is about 20% of um, people are going to work 20% at home going forward, right? They're going to be in the office three days a week, maybe four days a week, and they're going to be home at least one or two days a week. And I do think that's kind of how it's going to be. I mean, is that your take as well? Yeah, definitely. I read another study that said that about 40% of people would want to quit if they were forced to be in the office full time. Right. So 
you know, people have gotten used to this taste of freedom, the flexibility, they love it. I've worked from home for years, like 15 years, so I'm an old pro. But what right. I like about it is that now people are more comfortable with this and it works out so well for so many people. Absolutely, and it's altogether better, I think. It's gonna create better morale if you continue with that, I think. I think so too. You know, this hybrid model is definitely going to be what we're moving towards in the future. And I love that so many companies are embracing it. And it's great for entrepreneurs too. This kind of gives everyone the best of both worlds. So definitely glad that everyone's embracing it. Something else that's really cool about you, Steve, is that you wrote the book, The Small Business Bible, which is like famous. It's a great book. And it has really resonated with a lot of people. Why do you think that is? And what can readers find out in it? My, my fourth child, The Small <laughs> Business Bible. It's a funny story about that book. Um, okay. Tell me. When I, first started, when I first started writing for USA Today, I had this idea for a book called The Small Business Bible. Right, And I wrote a proposal, which is how you get a, a nonfiction book published and I gave it to my agent and she couldn't sell it. And I thought, how can, how, and it's, this is a time when the vitamin Bible was a big thing and Bible was a big word in books and like, how can you not sell it? And, but it didn't sell, no one bought the idea for a book. A year later, uh, John Wiley and said, the publisher Wiley wrote me out of the blue and said, we have an idea for a book that we want to call the small business Bible. <laughs> what? They write a proposal for us and I'm like, you know, give me 18 seconds to find it in my computer. And I'll give you, I'll give you the proposal. So, you know, it was just kismet how it happened. So it was just a nice tool for people to use on their book stand when they needed to learn something that they need to learn. And I try and write in a friendly, accessible way. I do think that's one of the skills. I may not have been the greatest lawyer ever, but I do think I can explain legal concepts and complicated business concepts in ways that are understandable for the rest of us. So that's what I think the book worked because it was relatable and I had some fun, fun stories in there, things like that. And that is great. I love when we add humor to those business books to keep them kind of lively. And it's such a compliment, you know, that people are using it as a reference, as a resource. A couple of people have said that to me and that really touched Yay. me. Yay. Yay. And I, obviously yeah. for you too, you know, it's great that we're able to help people out there. It's kind of a bright spot in our jobs. You also oh, yeah. have a new book coming out. Oh, before you get there, I just want to say what I love, and I bet you, I love entrepreneurs, right? Like business can be a little dry or big business can be, in my opinion, a little dry, but entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship, man, how it's people who are passionate and they love what they do and they get excited and they're creative and they're innovative. And so, you know, how can you not get excited when you're talking to people like that and, and like you writing about that topic, right? Yeah, definitely helping them to make their dreams come true, which is so, right. you know, rewarding, so inspirational. And they can just talk about any idea they have and you can pretty much talk to anyone. Everyone's had an idea for a business. So it's, it's super cool. It's a great field to be in. And I want to hear about your new book too. Yeah. So it's called, um, so the first, we try to come up with a title that's similar to my, your the small business Bible. It's called your small business boom um and it's how to take your business to the next level so as i said whether you're a, a solopreneur and you want to make a lot more money or you're a medium-sized smb and you want to grow you know how do you do that and how do you do that today so i each chapter is a different strategy idea tool to grow your business so it's how to get a hundred thousand followers how to get a million hits on your website uh, targeting you know, bigger clients. I mean, one problem a lot of small businesses have is they do B to C, right? They do business to consumer or they do B to SMB to other small businesses. Well, the problem with consumers and nonprofits and other small businesses is we have smaller budgets. So one easy trick people can do any small business is target bigger customers, right? Because yeah. bigger customers have corporate customers, government clients have much bigger budgets and an easy way to grow your business, not easy, but a very powerful way to grow your business is to target big and that's how i grew my business significantly one of the chapters you have is called the secrets of the millionaire solopreneur so wow. i want some of those secrets <laughs> tell our audience about that all right so what you have to do if, if you know if the challenge with being a solopreneur is you know if you're just doing all the work there's a limit on how much money you can make because you only have so many hours in the day or even if you're doing project-based work Still, there's only so much you can do. So you have to be able to leverage yourself. So, and create money, what I'm calling money while you sleep. 
right? So you have to create some profit centers, as I mentioned before, that are automatic. And maybe it's, it's um, an online store that sells 24 seven without you, right? And there is fulfillment, but you can even do fulfillment by Amazon or there's lots of different places you can do fulfillment. So if you can create some profit centers that are making money while you sleep that don't take you, like in my case, writing an article, right? Or giving a speech, something like that. Well, all of a sudden I'm making more money, yeah. right? And then maybe you hire an assistant, right? And your assistant does some work because if you don't have an assistant, you are the assistant and you shouldn't be the assistant <laughs> if you're the entrepreneur, right? If you're the entrepreneur, you got to spend spending your time marketing and meeting people and coming up with ideas and implementing those ideas and not sending out mail and things like that. So, and then you can leverage yourself by hiring other contractors. Maybe you go on a site like uh, guru.com or fiverr.com and you get business and maybe you get so much business that you can't do it all. Well, you hire other contracts to fulfill your contract. So you leverage yourself in these different ways so that you're not doing all the work, but work is getting done and you're being able to bill for it. That's in essence how you do it. Yes, excellent advice and tips and ways to kind of move yourself forward and grow into that min millionaire status and definitely agree about delegating and outsourcing and just working smarter instead of harder. So exactly. I'm, yeah, that's you gotta exactly do that, right? right? Yes. So I like to play a little game on my show. It's called, if you tell me yours, I'll tell you mine. So I'm All going right. to ask you some quick questions. What was your biggest aha moment? Oh, that's a, I've never been asked that question <laughs> before. So for, for me, it was when I was a lawyer. So <laughs> I started out, you know, I graduated law school. I got a job with the big firm in a big city making the big bucks. And it, I was really miserable. I really didn't like, I didn't like any of it. I didn't like working for people. Turns out I'm, I was a Does crappy, right? I said, I'm an entrepreneur. So I was a crappy employee, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I went off and I started my own law. I actually got fired from the law job. Oh, yeah. so, okay. Well, it was at least, you know, I was happy. Here's how, you know, you're an entrepreneur. If you get fired and you lose your benefits and your big check and all those things and you're thrilled, you know, yeah. because you get to start your own business. So I started my own business, my own law firm. And it turned out, I liked the finding of the clients, the marketing and the business part more than I liked the law part. So for me, that was my aha. Oh, I, maybe I'm not supposed to be a lawyer. Maybe I really am supposed to be an entrepreneur like my dad and like some people I really admire. So what was your- uh, uh, Mine is kind of similar. You know, I finally hit a point where I'm like, gee, you know, I feel like I'm doing more. I'm a little more innovative than those around me in, you know, kind of a bigger corporate setting. And I just thought, gosh, you know, I should be doing this for myself. Why am I making everybody else all this uh -huh. money? So eventually the same thing. So just deciding, you know, to launch out on my own and believe in myself, I think that was my big aha moment too. Nice. So who is your go-to person for advice? Um, so my, my sweet dad, who I mentioned, passed away when I was only 20 years old. Oh. Uh, his best friend has become my my second father, and uh, he, he's who I go to. He's he's never he's never really screwed me wrong ever, and you know he knows me and he knows where my strengths and importantly my weaknesses are. And he, you know, I'll give you one piece of advice he gave me when I was young, and I love this piece of advice. <laughs> I was trying to get published for the first time, and I was having such a hard time. Right? Was, yeah, was, hard. Often life is like a jar of pickles. You go you open a jar of pickles, and that first pickle they're all jammed in there. Getting that first pickle out of the jar is really hard, right? I'm like, yeah. Right. But after you get the first pickle out, all the other pickles come out much, much easier. So yeah. the trick in life and in business is to get that first pickle out of the jar. Like that is so wise because I got published the first time and then, you know, getting the second book and the third and the fourth, much, much easier. I think that's true kind of in anything you do in business. So he's given me good advice all the way along. I love that pickle analogy. I've never heard that one before. It's great. I'll have to use that. <laughs> and tell, me, tell me your go-to person. So my go-to person is my mom. You know, she never steers me wrong. My mom is one of those early in the tech field. She was one of the first computer programmers ever. She has a really strong kind of business mind. I always run things by her. She's very, uh, very good about dissecting things. I think I tend to be a little more emotional about things and she can really yeah. cut to the heart of the matter. So always go to my mom. She has great You're advice balanced. and great sayings too. <laughs> okay, next question. Do you have any siblings? I do. I have three siblings. I have a younger sister, a younger brother, 
uh, and an older brother. We're, we're a tight knit group. That is great. So you're in the yeah. middle. I'm in the middle too. I have an older sister and a younger brother. Nice. So next question is, what's your favorite food? Well, um, <laughs> I would say pizza. Pizza is probably my favorite food. I'm, I'm, I used to be Chinese food and I did with a, quite a Chinese chef there for a while, but uh, pizza and or sushi are my favorites. Oh yeah, those are both great for me. I would say pizza too, carbs, anything that's really terrible for me exactly, is something right? that I like. I love desserts, I have a big sweet tooth. So it's all those things, definitely. Last question of the game. What is your biggest career highlight so far? Oh. So many, right? Hard to choose. No, no, I'm thinking, I'm um, getting published for the first time. So for, for me, for, Writing a book was a bucket list item in, in my life. And I spent, I didn't get my first, I didn't get published till I was late in my thirties. And I spent all my twenties trying to get published in boys and girls. This is before the internet when there was like <laughs> gatekeepers and, you know, and editors and publishers and you couldn't just go online and write a blog, you know, uh, as you could today. Like I wanted to be a writer, even in my twenties, uh, nobody cared what Steve Strauss had to say. So that's actually why I ended up going to law school. Like, well, I, I met my wife and you're starting a family. Like, I need to be a grown up now and make some, some money. So I went to law school. It turned out I liked it and I was decent at it. And but I still had the writing bug after that. So I'm in my mid thirties and I'm at the law firm and I'm writing query letters and proposals to get published. And in fact, the reason I got published the first time was I wrote a query letter to 20 publishers about these little legal guides and I sent them off and you know, very hard. It's a, it's an unsolicited letter to a publisher who gets thousands of these. And a year later, I got a letter from W.W. W. Norton, which is a great publisher in New York. And they had written them a year before. I thought I was long. Uh, okay. Again, nobody wants to hear from Steve Strauss. They said, Hey, we saw your letter and we really like this idea for these little legal books. And could you come to New York and talk to us? And they, they had sent an intern down once a year to the, it's called the slush pile. And then it was literally physically yeah. a pile. And he found my letter. And he gave it to an editor there and they wrote me and I flew to New York. And so the first thing I ever got published after 15 years of not being published, I got a four book book deal. Oh, wow. That's great. Right, right off the bat there. It's a miracle. To this day, it's a miracle. So that was definitely the highlight. That is amazing. And, you know, we always come back to those things that we wanted to do. I think for me, too, one of my highlights would definitely be the book deal and, you know, just getting it out into the world. It's been a goal since I was really young. Doing yeah. this show is fun, too. And I got an endorsement from Barbara Corcoran, who's a shark. So that's always oh, a big deal. so great. If you pitch at a shark and you get a yes, that is a highlight for sure. <laughs> for, for sure. So I got Seth Godin for this book. Oh, that's like, good. Very similar, right? Like, oh my God, that's very, it's very exciting. It is very exciting. Okay, yeah. well, we're coming to the end of the show here. and it's we're, having, we're, having so, we're having so much fun. Great fun. Where can the audience find out more about you? Absolutely. You can come to my my personal branding, me, Steve Strauss, site. it's called MrAllBiz.com, M-R-A-L-L-B-I-Z. I have a small business site for the self-employed called The Self-Employed. Oh, or you can go to USA Today and you can find me there for sure. Very cool. So everybody, please be sure to check Steve out. And until then, we will see you next time on Launch. If you're thinking about starting a business or just want to develop your entrepreneurial spirit, check out my new book, Launch Your Inner Entrepreneur. It's available at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Porchlight, Walmart, and everywhere books are sold.